Good evening. I'm Judy Woodruff in Washington. And I'm Robert McNeil in New York. After the news summary this Wednesday, we have a newsmaker interview with President Clinton's trade representative, Mickey Cantor. Then a report on Oregon's search for federal approval of its health care rationing plan. Next, an update from Yugoslavia. And finally, remembering Helen Hayes. Funding for the McNeil Air News Hour has been provided by PepsiCo. <laughs> Part of helping the world live and communicate better is keeping it well informed. That's why funding for the News Hour is also provided by AT&T and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. At least six people died and 15 were injured in Florida today when an Amtrak passenger train slammed into a gasoline tanker truck. It happened at a Fort Lauderdale crossing in mid-afternoon. All of the dead and injured were in vehicles at the crossing, which was engulfed in flames after the crash. The train was carrying 108 passengers and 10 crew from New York City. All on board were safely evacuated. Robin? Officials in India said today that two people had been detained in a massive bombing in Calcutta. But it remained unclear exactly who was behind the fatal blast and whether it was a terrorist attack. Richard Vaughn of Worldwide Television News narrates this report. And closely associated with India's ethnic tensions, the site of the blast was not an obvious terrorist target. So far, no group has claimed any responsibility for this, the second bombing outrage in less than a week. Late into the day, bodies were still being hauled out of the rubble of buildings mainly used as cheap lodgings. The victims were mostly poor, itinerant laborers and homeless street vendors. Police have ruled out any connection with last Friday's massive string of blasts in Bombay. This time, the criminal underworld is suspected and arrests have been made. Hospital sources put the death toll at around 60 and likely to rise as search operations continue. At least another 100 people have been injured, many seriously. Most of the dead were close to the center of the blast. Many of the injured were in nearby buildings which, weakened by age, just collapsed. Possible clues to the bomber's identity may lie in the area's proximity to both the police headquarters and a major underworld-run red light district. Two men were indicted today for the World Trade Center bombing in New York. 25-year-old Mohammed Salameh and Nidal Ayad, also 25, were arrested earlier this month and are being held without bail. The Wall Street Journal said today that three other suspects fled the country 48 hours after the first arrest. The bombing killed six people and injured more than 1,000. Cleanup at the Trade Center is ahead of schedule. Officials said that tenants will begin returning tomorrow, two weeks earlier than anticipated. An immigration judge in New Jersey has ruled that a controversial Muslim cleric can be deported. Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman has links to at least one of the Trade Center bombing suspects. He is also a spiritual leader for Islamic fundamentalists in his native Egypt. He was charged but later acquitted in the 1981 assassination of Egyptian President Anwar Sadat. In Egypt today, at least 10 Muslim extremists were killed when police attacked their hideout in a southern city. The raid followed the bombing of several empty tourist buses outside a museum in Cairo yesterday. Extremists have waged a year-long terror campaign aimed at overthrowing the Egyptian government. There was more unrest in the Israeli-occupied territories today. At least 40 Palestinians were wounded in the Gaza Strip during clashes with Israeli troops. Two Palestinians died and 80 were injured in Gaza fighting yesterday. In the West Bank, Jewish settlers attacked an Arab-owned gas station. The settlers were angry over the killing of two Jews Monday when they were struck by a van driven by an Arab. The United States ordered a rapid reaction force to a southern Somali city today because of new fighting. A military spokesman said the 500-member force would be deployed in Kismayu within 24 hours. One of two warlords vying for control of the town broke a ceasefire Tuesday, attacking his rival's forces. The United Nations suspended Somali reconciliation talks today until it obtained more information on the situation. 
In Bosnia, Serb forces allowed three aid convoys to enter the country today, but another convoy meant for the town of Srebrenica remains stuck at the border, where it has been for the past week. Thousands of Muslim refugees are in the town, many of whom are seriously injured. U.S. officials said today that Serb planes bombed several towns in the region over the weekend, violating the U.N. no-fly zone. We'll have more on the Bosnia story later in the program.